section of web page existing uh, for qu quite a while, uh, on the order of 10 or 15 years, that uh, relates to uh, relativity and the relation between the equations of relativity and the actual uh, metric of, of space time. And uh, I had a, I found an, an, an equation which I call the interesting equation. Let's see. This is forward. I found uh, uh, yeah, yeah. it was a research going very far back. Originally, my idea was that possibly photons are subject to a decay in their energy if they have mass, they have a small amount of mass. And I was thinking in around 1949 AD that uh, that would be an interesting concept and it would be more favorable to an eternal universe a longer lasting universe. And ultimately, I arranged as a graduate student at Princeton to see Einstein. I saw him in presence also in a, of an assistant at his office. The discussion went on for a considerable time, and then Einstein said, well, if you, you have to work really hard over a long time to develop something. Of course, I was a little dip disappointed, but yet that is very reasonable logically. And he himself was working then on a type of electromagnetic gravitational theory unified, which was uh, not concordant with the existing accepted theory, which was called the Einstein-Maxwell equations things just fit together neatly and you would assume that that is, is correct because of its neatness and simplicity. Well, then I shift to another topic and mention that the reason I am thinking of presenting, the thought of presenting this here was that last summer I was at a meeting in New York in the embassy, the French embassy. They had a cultural division, which is on Manhattan and different locations from the main embassy. And I was there for a special event. And it, it so happened that, uh, uh, that Louis Nirenberg was also there and also Cedric Fellaini was there. There were different events, music, and some dis discussion had people doing. When my turn came, I said something that I had this web page, I had these things that were interesting in relation to relativity, and uh, uh, The, that, uh, <coughs> but that I said these would be noticed for if they were put into an archive publication, that I could publish essentially the same ideas in, as an archive publication, then it would be, would communicate more than just being on my web page. And, uh, that idea that suggested to, to the idea of, of using this now, I have nothing else to prepared to, to present as mathematical research. This, this is mathematical research over a considerable period of time. And uh, so let me look a, a, a bit there.
Yes, well, that is the first page. This, this, this web page that goes back to lectures at, at different times in the, in the past. There was, there was one at Penn State, and there was one also at the Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies, or the Dublin University Institute, I forget for sure which. And these, are, these can actually be dug up from records on the internet. So you see that uh, whichever way version you look at it, the, this handwriting is sometimes more effective than, than what you can use on the computer. Over here, this seems good. This is, instead of a, being a second order equation, the equations of vacuum in Einstein, this is the equation of vacuum, but it is fourth order. And uh, this is a, a standard operator. Einstein tensor is derived from the Ricci tensor, but uh, this is relating to the Einstein. It's not quite the same as the Ricci tensor. It has it has reverse trace. I think. This is a Riemann tensor with four elements. Are those the Ricci tensor? Well, let's see. Do I go on to the next page? There's a lot of shiny reflections. Does it want to push just one thing? Do you want to go to the next page? Yes. I can't do it with this? Something here. Well, there's a, a long, uh, a long trail of thinking that yes. It was a, a long, long trail of thinking that led me to these, these equations, but uh, it came originally from the idea that the uh, red, the red shift, might be a f somehow a false effect that came due to a loss of energy f from light in a large field, and this is somehow related to Yukawa fields. And I, I started thinking about what could be the partial differential equations of, of such fields. I went through some calculations, and what came out by surprise, I saw some uh, fourth order expression in uh, these uh, these tensor calculus quantities that was scale-free in this character. This is a celebrated property of the Einstein equations. That this thing related to it. it's scale-free. The structure of a large black hole might be the same, basically, as a, a small black hole. Other aspects of the scale-free character, which seems nice if you have no basis of scale, but of course one can wonder about things like that. So the scalar equation, the equation that was written down first, the general equation, 
gives a scalar equation if, uh, if one does the standard summing over all the four, four components. And so once n is dimensions here, now it turns out also that if n equals four, the whole thing is 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 very simplified. But I will be able to show that later. I hope. But uh, this is just proposed as something that may be of interest if you are a, a, a mathematician or a physicist, mathematical physicist, astronomer. So you, you may be concerned. Recently, for example, there's been a lot of talk about dark energy. And there was dark matter before that. But these concepts, if you look into them, are concepts that derive from Einstein relativity. Or, and also for the, from the popular series of an expanding universe, like an FR, let's see, FLMR universe, Friedman, uh, let's see, Friedman, Demetri, Robertson, Walker, that's FLRW universe, a popular theory of something that's entirely symmetric uh, as far as two dimensions are concerned, and then there are two spatial dimensions. Well, I didn't get the right, this, it expands in, in four, three spatial dimensions and changes in time. And uh, this uh, allows, this is what later on allows what Einstein was concerned with back in 1915, I think, when he introduced a, a variation, a, a cosmological term, which was described by capital letter lambda. And what that did made it possible for a, a balanced universe in his theory to have what seemed like the qualities, the qualities of the observational universe at that time, which was 1915. And uh, it, it seemed uh, that the universe needed some gravitation of matter that could be recognized. But the astronomer looks out into the space and doesn't, in effect, doesn't see any matter. <laughs> it's like a, a vacuum asymptotically. You have the, the matter, recognizable matter in the, in the, in the, this galaxy. And we see much more of it now. We can find some planets. Out, but they're, 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 they are like dark matter since uh, they don't, don't show much. And so uh, one, one thing this could do, it's like alternative, it can be an alternative at least for the cosmological constant that Einstein used at that time. It could have been used instead of the cosmological constant, but it would mean using fourth order partial image equations instead of two. There's, I think there's much more to be learned uh, about 
dark matter or dark energy. Also, my opinion, my personal opinion, is whether or not something like this, this fourth order equation could be relevant was influenced by the work done in Geneva uh, with the Large Hadron Collider. You see, the, the theory of the Higgs boson involves the idea of quantization of gravity. There's just, you see, there's some sort of big heavy particle there, and what does it do? What does it cover? Underlying that, there's standard model theory where the quantization of light and more elaborations upon the original quantization of light, uh, electromagnetic energy. And so it's the idea of some quantization of gravity, well, maybe there can be that. that. And so then maybe something like this will be, will, will fit very, very appropriately. So uh, the, I, I, I know I, the, the, the search is not finished yet, but I, I can write up the, uh, the archive version and it has some of this, the same ideas that I have up to the present time. Now, is it time for me? Oh, you're saying. <laughs> <laughs>